Congratulations, you are thinking of selling your home, your primary home that is. And if you are thinking about selling your primary home, there is one big thing that you should be asking your realtor who should then direct you over to your CPA, but that is going to be about capital gains tax. What can you expect to pay or not pay once you sell your home? So capital gains taxes, what are those? Your gains are any profits made on the sale of your primary home or an investment. Again, this video is gonna be all about your primary home, selling it and what you owe to the government. So a capital gain is the profit from the sale of a property or an investment. And if you're watching this video, maybe the term capital gains taxes kind of struck a chord with you. Maybe you're thinking about selling your property, et cetera. And of course, your natural thought should be, what kind of taxes should I expect to pay on, the, on this? So hopefully you've done well, hopefully you're gonna make some money, and of course we wanna keep all of that money in your pocket. So let's talk about some exclusions and some ways around having to pay capital gains taxes. Again, I kinda mentioned it before, but I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it again. This has to only be for your primary residence. We're not talking about investment properties. If you want to know how to not pay taxes on investment properties, please go and check out my other YouTube video on 1031 exchanges. So this is about the home that you are living in, your primary residence. And another big disclosure is that I am not a CPA. I'm a realtor and I'm a real estate investor. So I'm going to just try to talk about the big concepts when it comes to capital gains taxes and what you should expect when selling your property. First of all, did you know that if you are a single tax filer and you make less than $250,000 on the sale of your property that you do not have to pay taxes. That is one of the humongous exclusions. And did you know that if you are married, that you file as a married couple, that you do not have to pay taxes if you make less than $500,000 on the sale of your home? Half a million dollars. So $250,000 or $500,000 if, this is the big if, this is the big if, if you've lived in your property two out of the last five years. So that's one of the big ones. You have to live in the house two, two, sorry, let me get my fingers right, two out of the last five years. You also have to have owned that property for 24 months. And a lot of people may think, well, living in it for two out of the last five years and owning the property for 24 months is the same thing. A lot of times people can sometimes rent to own and they may not have actually been the owners. That would be one of those ownership qualities that you have to adhere to. So you have to own the property for 24 months or you have to have lived in the property two out of the last five years. So those are usually really big check boxes. If you can do that, and if you're a single tax filer, $250,000 or less, it's all yours, baby. Married tax filer, $500,000, it's all yours. You do not have to pay taxes. Now, let's talk about a couple other exclusions that you should know about. So hold up for a quick second because I want to make sure that I'm being extremely clear. When we're talking about the $250,000 or the $500,000 if you're single or married, we're talking about profit. So after you've sold your home, that would be the profit that you are making from the sale of your home after paying off the loan balance, paying closing costs, paying everything. That's the money that you're taking away from the transaction, okay? So let's say that I am a single person. Hide that for a second. I am a single person. I purchased my house for $150,000 and now I'm selling it for $300,000, okay? And I, these are very basics and of course the numbers, you're gonna be like, but, 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 no, just basic, Stay, stick with me. So I bought it for 150, I'm selling it for 300,000, I didn't pay any loan balance down while I owned it and I'm gonna walk away with $150,000. As a single person, I get to take that $150,000 and put it into my bank account, tax free. That's what I'm talking about, profit. So this video specifically is focusing on you staying in the property two out of the last five years and knowing all of these concepts and how much money that you can save. But I mean, you should know what happens if you don't adhere to these timelines. So let's quickly say that you are in the house for less than a year. Then you're gonna have short-term capital gains tax or greater than a year, but less than two years. Then you're gonna have long-term capital gains tax 
Both of those are gonna have different tax brackets. The short term is gonna hit you a lot harder than the long term, but you could find yourself paying 10, 15, or even 20% in taxes on your profits. That's a lot of money. And that is exactly the reason why I wanted to put this video together to make sure that you are fully aware of those timelines and trying to stay within them. One thing that I actually just recently learned myself was that there's actually an exemption limit that you can only do this, where this is only going to save you that money every two years. And again, you may be kind of wondering, how is that gonna actually affect me? Well, let's say that you lived in a house two out of the last five years, but let's say that you've owned it for five years, right? And you're renting it for some of that portion. And then I also went over here and bought a house when I've lived in that for two years, because over here I've got renters in there, but I still lived in it two out of the last five years. I wanna sell this house and I wanna sell this house and I don't wanna pay any capital gains tax. Well, you've gotta wait two years in between the sale of those two properties to be able to do that. So you could sell one and possibly not pay the capital gains tax and then you may have to wait on your other primary residence to do the same. So there is a two year limit. Now let's talk about if you come up a little shy. So let's say that you have not lived in the property two out of the last five years. There's a couple reasons why a CPA may still be able to help you. Here's a few. So let's say that you are shy on that time limit, the two out of the last five years. No, I haven't lived in there. I've lived in there for 23 months. I haven't accomplished the 24, well, if it was 23 months, I'd say just live in the house for one more month. But let's just say that you just can't live in the property for the full two years for whatever reason. There are some loopholes that your CPA may be able to use. If you're selling your primary residence, there's a good chance that you're moving somewhere else for a reason. And a lot of times I see people getting a new job. So they have to move to another state to start a job. There's a 50 mile rule that if you have to move due to a job relocation and it's greater than 50 miles away from that primary residence, your CPA may be able to help you out with that. Same rule applies for my military guys and gals. So if you get orders, that doesn't seem, I mean, it really doesn't seem fair and it makes sense, right? Somebody gets orders and they have to transfer to another base out of state or out of country. Why should they get dinged on the capital gains tax? Because they were serving their country and mandated to move. So that's another loophole. And one that I just found out as of recently, which makes complete sense to me, and always makes me feel really grateful for my health is for a specific medical reason. I've known, uh, let's just use a friend for an example who had a little boy who had a damaged eye and there was only one hospital that would really be able to help him with his eyesight and fixing his eye. If you are forced to move for a medical reason because of the professional that you need to be using out of state, that also may be a loophole. So. Just think of it in terms of being forced to move. And, and these are very specific. So again, if I'm not listing your exact situation, I would say contact your CPA. These are just a few that I know of. So greater than 50 miles because of a job relocation, military orders, medical reasons. Those would all be reasons why I would talk to my CPA if I hadn't lived in the house two out of the last five years, if I was coming up short on maybe a way out of having to pay those capital gains taxes. So now that we've talked about some basics, I want to bring up a situation that I, I am constantly talking about with clients. Again, I'm a realtor and I'm a real estate investor, so a lot of my clients like to talk to me about mm, the potential of keeping a house as an investment property. So let's just go and use an example. Let's say that I purchase a home and I live in it for two years and now I'm ready to move up and move on, buy another house, et cetera. But I wanna hold on to that property because it's gonna be my first property in my investment portfolio. So now I'm gonna start renting it out. Something that you're going to want to keep track of is the fact that at the end of that five years, if you don't sell it, because you've already adhered to all the exclusions, I've lived in the home as a primary residence and now I'm starting to rent it. But after that five years, if you go to sell that property, you may not be able to take all of those profits that we previously discussed. Example, I'm a single person. I purchased the house again for 150,000. I lived in it for two years. I continued to rent it out. It's year four, four and a half. I'm coming up on five years and I can make $249,000. 
Do I want to sell it and keep that profit in my bank account tax-free? Or do I want to hold on to that property long-term? At that point, you're rolling yourself into an investment portfolio and you're gonna have tax implications because it did become a rental property. Again, you may wanna go look at my 1031 exchange video, you know, but at that point, you have a distinct vector in the road, hold or sell. So hold the property for a long-term investment or sell because you can sell it and make all of those profits tax-free. So when you're buying or selling, these are some things that you should be thinking about. You should just kind of have some basic understanding of your capital gains, rules, delineations, things like that. Living in the house two out of the last five years should be something that you can put in your hip pocket forever. Okay, I'm gonna buy a house as my primary residence. I'm going to attempt to live in this property two out of the last five years. Or sometimes investors like me, I may have had a property that's an investment property and I've actually thought to go back and live in that property as my primary residence for two years to be able to get all of those tax benefits. So these can go both ways. That two out of the last five years is a really big thing that you should understand. The other big one would be if you're single, the amount of profit that could be tax free. Single 250,000, married 500,000. This is a lot of money that we're talking about guys and it's really only the two years that you really gotta hit or the 24 months ownership, et cetera. So again, this was just kind of a basic idea and understanding of capital gains, taxes, rules, exemptions, things that you should know about when purchasing or selling. If you have any other questions, just a very quick reminder of who's your homegirl, I'm your homegirl.